asked around on what you guys want to see next on the Mega Cab, and there's a whole bunch of options like interior, dually conversion, get the truck running and driving, all that stuff. A lot of you guys want to see the dually conversion. I don't blame you. It's basically the last bit to the truck to kind of give it that final form of what she's supposed to be. So we're going to dive head first into the dually conversion. It'll likely be one video just by itself, and we'll try to go as in-depth as possible because we're going to do it a kind of roundabout way that uh, <laughs> maybe it's not the right way, but it'll work out nonetheless. So yeah, let's dive right in to the next episode of the Mega Cab. <laughs> let's get it on. Welcome to High House Stable Garage. This is the Mega Cab. For anyone that's brand new on this episode, we got a whole series on this fella. It's uh, two single cabs welded into one. She's a single wheel, diesel, four-speed manual, manual transfer case, four-wheel drive unit. Extended the frame, did a whole bunch of stuff. But we're going to be changing it from a single wheel to a dually rear wheel in this episode. And we got a little bit of a roundabout way to do it. You see, down the road will actually put the right axle in it because basically the dually, I did a little bit of research after I was caught off guard with the cabin chassis. Those axles are quite a lot smaller <laughs> than what we need. But basically, rear axle is six inches longer, tube wise and axle shaft wise, than our single rear wheel axle inside this uh, 10 and a quarter, this, uh, this old 350 there. So we got to convert it, but we're going to convert it simple right now the everyman way and then down the road when we can source an axle we'll change her out but in order to paint this unit we got to basically do up the dually conversion get it all done because i don't want to paint it twice that's not fun and when it comes to paint we're we're almost there we got the epoxy primer we got all the bondo fiberglass everything we need we're just waiting on two quarts of blue basically and we should have enough to do everything and that stuff there is getting some expensive you're talking about 35 dollars per quart not good so i only want to do it once cry once buy once buy once cry once do everything once pretty much let's get into this dually conversion i'm going to show you guys how we're going to do it so remember when i said there was a right way and a wrong way to do the fenders on the dually conversion so let's get it out of the way the best way to do the dually conversion on those trucks is change the axle to the dually spec axle and then buy a complete dually bed with the fenders already on. One and done, you're done. But we're cheap. A dually bed is getting expensive around here, especially for the 80 to 86, because the wheel arches are different. Common 80s truck problem, you know what I mean? The second best way to do it would be to put an axle in, the right axle, and then go get dually fenders that were made for the dually bed, get some takeoffs, and then graft them onto your own bed and do your cutting and all that stuff that you have to do nice and easy those are also expensive down here you're talking about 250 dollars per side for dually fenders it's absolutely nuts i don't know how people are doing it but i can tell you we're not doing it that way so that begs the question how are we doing it for right now we're going to be using two inch spacers on the back it's an inch shorter than stock we'll be fine it'll be fine with the ribs i already did some research on it we're okay using four inches basically these fenders are not dually fenders these are step side fenders basically there's a couple small differences in it one major difference but i'll bring you guys in to see but that's how we're going about it step side fenders i bought both of these for 75 dollars at a swap meet they're a little rougher shape but for 75 bucks versus 250 per side, 500 bucks, I think we're winning pretty darn slick. If we can make up for it time-wise on that, doing a little bit of fab work, it more so pays for the fenders. So I'm not too worried about that. She's a custom rig anyway. What's a little bit more custom about it? So let me bring you guys in. I'm going to show you what's different on these fenders compared to a regular dually fender so you can understand why we're going to do what we're going to do on that truck versus how normally people would do it if that makes sense so first main difference we're gonna look right down the bed do you see that there's a gentle curve to that bed let me enhance there you go 
Most flat earthers, they might not be able to see it, but if you look really closely, you can see it kind of curves just like so. And then it's really hard to see, but it also kind of curves like this. Give you guys another second to take a look. Again, I'm trying my best here, but it, it's, it's hard to see, but trust me, it's curved. There you go. I don't know why I didn't do this the first time. Look at this body line right here. Bring you guys in. Do you see how it curves in just slightly? Basically, that's what we're after. That's how the style side beds are done. Dually and single wheel. Let's go look at those step side fenders. And let's look at the difference. Here is your common 80s step side fender. And as you can see, it has the 80s arch. Bingo bango right there. Well, what makes an 80s step side fender different from a dually fender is how it's mounted. Normally, these are mounted onto a flat bed, basically. Flat here, flat there, bolted, riveted, whatever they do. As you can see, she's flat. Let that guy flop down. As you can see, she's flat. Come back to the bed, put my straight edge on. It's close. If I had a longer straight edge, you would see it a lot better. But trust me, there's a little bit of rock to that, especially here, as you can see. Gap and gap. So I hope we're on the same page. What I'm trying to get across is these fenders will not natively bolt onto that bed. There's a little bit of flex in them, a little bit of give. We can play around with that too. I'm not saying we're not gonna abuse that fact, but natively that bed side will not fit this. It's just how she goes. There's two options that we have. One, we're decent with a welder. We've put two cabs together, welded frames together, Got a whole bunch of little projects. There's an international right in front of me. He's a majority welds and <laughs> stuff like that. So we're neat around a welder. We can modify the bedside to fit the flat fender, basically. We have to cut into that guy anyway. There's no scenario we're not cutting to that bed, even if we had the right fenders. So threat not. We might go about that way. A second way is we add the curve onto this fender we cut this fender to match that bedside, and then we do fiberglass work on this fender. Both of which, they're okay to do. We have the supplies to do both. I'm not uh, against doing fiberglass work. Usually fiberglass work isn't exactly my skill set, but for fenders, I'm not too worried. They have bondo and stuff over it anyway. So there's two ways we can do it. But before we do any of that, there's a little bit of step side stuff attached to these fenders that make it impossible to even mock up. I'll bring you guys in, but I'm basically talking like steps, brackets, that kind of stuff, random bolts. We got to cut those, make them blank slates. Then we can bring them over to the bed, just kind of see where everything's going to lie. And then we can see just how bad it really is. Cause I've never actually seen a step side fender on a style side bed before. We'll have to see just how bad is bad. So. I gotta cut off these brackets. I'll show you which ones. And then we can mock it up. All these bolts down here, a couple straggler bolts all throughout. Bolts over there. We might leave that bracket. He's not really in the way. Vice versa on this fender. There's a little bit of stuff to cut off. I'm gonna zing those off the angle grinder. And then we're gonna go over there and we're gonna play around and just kind of see how things are gonna go. All right, so this is gonna be the first time I've seen this on this guy too. So we can kind of see what exactly we're dealing with. I think it's somewhere like that. It might even be taller. I might have to look at some photos and go with it like that. But we'll put some masking tape on this fella. I'll kind of figure out where this has to go and I'll bring you guys back. But it's kind of like that. And here's a little bit of side anglage for where roughly it's going to kind of go. Not bad. All right, so I was doing some sleuthing online and I find the measurements that we needed. So basically coming off the front of the bed, virtually, we're gonna do a common point. We'll go basically this line right here. You're gonna go, technically the measurement I found was 575 millimeters, but fret not. I'm gonna do the exact conversion for you guys. 
So basically, it comes out to 22 and 5 eighths is gonna be the magic number and where we wanna put that. That is not 5 eighths where I put that. <laughs> oh geez. That right there is gonna set our distance from here to there. The next one is actually really easy to line up. It's this body line right here. Goes through the entire fender. That body line right there is supposed to match up with this body line right here. So, there's a little bit of shenanigans that have to go down, have to throw down in order to get this guy all lined up. So yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but it's more for reference for me anyway. You'll see it when the fender's on. So I got my line 22 and 5 eighths down to the bottom. Take a note, this part right here, the bed kind of curls in a little bit. So you got to account for that. I believe it's about an eighth inch difference right here on this body line than it is to this body line. So account for that on your line you'll be nice and straight as for the other one i just kind of added dots on this body line as my reference because again this body line here matches up with that body line there the whole fender kind of overlaps over top so what we're going to do now i'm going to mask this guy by mask i mean just wrap masking tape around it and we're going to try to hang them off this bedside and we're going to see what our gaps are here 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 and then we can kind of decide are we going to chew on the fender or are we gonna chew on the bed? It's one or the other. All right, so very roughly, very roughly, it's hard to keep the masking tape from holding her up. Hopefully it doesn't just off on me. But I'll give you the general gist of what we're dealing with. It's kind of like that there. That mark there is what sets basically our entire length. The rest of it will just kind of fall where she goes. I can hear the tape actively coming off. So I better hurry up. But that is going to set us up basically to go where we need to go let's look at the gaps because that's the most integral point from what i see from what i'm looking at the top is very much the exact same length of gap the entire way basically from point to point that doesn't seem to be an issue and then from there down kind of the same story all setting done and yeah that adds a, a little bit of meat to her <laughs> Not gonna lie, it looks kind of goofy with one little wheel. But either way, this gives us a good insight on what we have to do. See right there, it's not so bad, but we got a really decent gap down here on the bottom. We're likely gonna have to do some fabrication work. But I think what we're gonna do, really, is recess this in and make our own mounts. Then we can kind of flare the steel around this fender the top of the fender is not bad that can pretty much get bolted directly onto the bedside it's the curvature of this bedside that seems to be the issue now hear me out we have to do this anyway even if we had the right dually fenders let me bring you in there we go got some light all the sheet metal on the inside of this bedside has to go even on a normal fender for a dually conversion there's no getting around that you basically have to build your own inner fenders after to seal the deal but the entire bedside has to be cut away so what i'm thinking is on this guy we're going to trace around this fender i'll get him a little bit more set up where he has to be then what we're going to do we know that this down and that down because this fender has to be recessed in there's no getting around it so yeah we have two options on what we want to do first option let me bring you guys if in. you weren't going to do any fiberglass any work whatsoever go about it this way the top as i said is a nice uniform gap basically front to back what's that telling me is that this right here it pulls in maybe an eighth inch whatever from there that point to this point all what that is telling me right now is if we cut this curve out of this bedside completely, that top is going to lay flush. No issues. It's this right here that is the only real difference in the curvature. Now, if you were going to go about it, what I would do, start off by cutting this here and cutting that there, sinking this into the bedside first, then you can figure out your fabrication work that you have to do afterwards. This is basically going to butt up against it It'll look fine, especially once you do the body work to it. Because all of this gets a seam of caulk, basically, all around it. 
What we're gonna use is the same stuff we're using basically for the windshield when we put it in, urethane. It's gonna get a nice urethane strip and it's gonna, when you paint it, it's gonna be a nice uniform body line going from point A to point B. That's one way you'd do it. Modify this, do your mounts, all that stuff. You have version two, the hopefully you don't screw up method, but it should give a nicer product at the end of the day. And I think this is the method that we're gonna go. Let me bring you guys in. But what I think we're gonna do to make this fender fit is shave the fender contour into it. At least the majority of it. Down here, I might do my own fiberglass work and we'll work on that because I plan on fixing some of this step side stuff up anyway, fiberglass work. So we'll just kind of extend it out here. But we'll shave along this and make him basically set up for what we need. Now, in order to do that, what we have to do is start shaving this guy down on both sides. Get him recessed in just that little bit. It really doesn't have to go much. Up here, let's grab the tape, try to do it one-handed here. Up here, you know, it's just about like five-eighths of an inch, something like that, across the entire bit. So go where it touches, and we'll move this contour five-eighths of an inch in. We'll work with it like that up to about here we'll stop we'll feather it out we'll do that on both sides and then we'll mock it back up and see how it fits i don't care that we're cutting the mounting piece out of this fender that's not a big deal to me all what we want right now is to get this guy flat against this we can make mounts steel wise and we can make mounts fiberglass wise i'm not worried because again we have more than enough fiberglass mat to make a fender and we got more than enough welding experience to stick two pieces of steel together so i think that we're gonna be okay i think how we're gonna do it we're gonna start tackling that guy i gotta do some measurements mark it all out and stuff i'll bring you guys in when it's all marked up save you guys the hassle but that's what we're gonna do i'm gonna shave that guy down get my final measurements and maybe we'll do a comparison when this guy is fully shaved compared to the other one, then we can kind of see where everything's going to land. So this is going to take a long time. I might not see it for a couple days. For you, it's going to be instantaneous. But for me, it might be a couple days of me sanding and getting this exactly right. And then I'll bring you guys back. But to tell you the honest truth, we're kind of metal fabricators at the end of the day. I don't mind doing a little bit of fiberglass work. Not my hot ticket. And I don't really want to shave into this fender and screw it up. Tell you the honest truth. Either way, but if we screw it up, we're going to have to fix it anyway. So we'll learn on the fly. But I think what we're going to do is try to modify the bedside to get her done. So to start her out, I took this fender back off and we're measuring point to point. Figuring out just how long this little fella is. It's looking. Let's see if I can get this guy in the same spot on both sides there just to make sure. And we don't screw her up, maybe like dead center. Something like that. There we go. We're looking just a touch over six feet. Six feet, three sixteenths, something like that. See if I can get a better, a better gander at her. Mm, it's looking like, nope, six feet, one eighth. So what we're going to do, we're going to measure six feet, one eighth from this line to over there, mark it, and then... I think what we're going to do, simply put, slice and slice. We'll just cut this guy clean off. Maybe not this section right here, because I think we can deal with this guy just a touch. I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue. Yeah. We're going to do the unthinkable, and we're going to cut six foot one eighth out of this bed from that line to this line. Whoop. And then basically right across this body line, there'll be a little bit more to cut out out here. But this is relatively flat, so we might even be able to just bolt that guy right onto her. If not, just the center section, something like that. We'll figure it out. Well, that's the idea anyway. Let me mark that guy up. And then uh, we'll make it so we can't go back. Sounds good. What's the saying? You can't make a cake without breaking a few eggs, or you can't make a chicken without an egg, or... I don't know. Let's, uh... Let's really screw up this bedside. <laughs> Uh, okay, here we go. Well, there we go. We've been at this predicament before. You gotta make her look bad before you can make her look good. So, 
We just whoop, 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 cut that guy off. I figure even if we cut too much, we'll figure it out. We always do. So that's the plan. I'm going to vice grip that guy to this edge because we should just be able to, you know, put holes in this guy and bolt them directly on. Then we'll have to fabricate and figure out where this guy lands. That guy, that guy. And then we should be able to make something up. I'm not worried. So let me attach that fender and we'll go from there. There we go. Take it with a grain of salt, basically, on how it is. Basically got two vice grips holding her up right now. All right, so there's a method to my madness. Trust me on this. This is flat mount. Now what we're gonna do to convert this bedside over, as you can see, if I push this guy in, we get that. So basically what I'm gonna end up doing is it gonna go round to flat. Flat where it joins there. Same both sides. Then we're just gonna bolt it on like a normal step side. I think it's gonna work out pretty darn slick. So what I'm gonna do to make it flat, really, now that we know that it mounts up, I'm gonna have to go in, I don't know, inch or two, wherever this kind of ends up. I'm gonna have to go in about that amount, likely maybe somewhere around that line, whatever. Don't mind these, I tried out a whole bunch of different ideas. This is the best way. So I'll go in, let's say three inch, whatever, Cut three inches off that, tack them on, there we go. Then, not this piece, but we're gonna use some angle, and that angle will basically go from this corner here down to that bottom corner, and it will flatten out that sucker. And then, we can bolt this guy just direct. Nice and easy, you don't gotta overcomplicate things. We'll do it on both sides, and it will look out pretty good because it will be a nice gradual transition from round to flat, and then from flat to round. Shouldn't be any issue. I measured this side, measured that side, basically from this gap to where it has to go. Inch and seven sixteenths on this side, inch and a half on the back. What's good about this side, we only gotta really fiddle around and screw around and measure and cut and do a whole bunch of stuff on this side. Once we get this one done and it's bolted on, we can just reverse the entire thing on that and we should be able to do a cut once, cry once over there. Here it's a little bit of finagling. So what I'm gonna do, I already marked my drill holes underneath. I'm just going to take the two vice grips off. We'll pull him off. We can drill this guy. Then off this guy, I'm going to cut an inch and sixteenths. Going to cut uh, right here. Sorry. Then we're going to cut an inch and a half off the other side. Bingo, bango. That'll extend that guy out. Then very critical at the end, we have to make this guy flat, just like so. So I got to go find some angle or something along those lines that we can use. Should work out pretty good. Then that will allow us to bolt this fender onto the bed. Should be pretty good. This is a little bit of filler pieces and stuff like that. Experimentation, that's the name of the game on this fella. Either way, I'm going to take this fender off. I'm going to get that stuff done. I'll bring you guys back when, uh, you know, I got the two pieces back tacked up on to this bedside. We can go from there. All right, that ain't too bad there. Got that guy sucked in. Basically, got that guy welded there. So I'm gonna mount my fender again. Let's just quick with the vice grips and we'll see how she goes. But if that lays flat, then we're nowhere on to something. Then I can finish weld that guy up and then we just gotta do the back. There we go. Got it bolted on. And as you can see, this flat panel, you really can't even notice. So I think that's a win, really, at the end of the day. Basically goes from curve to flat. Got a nice flat edge there. This just isn't sucked in yet, but that's the idea. A we'll bolt on there or fender washers. So what I gotta do, I gotta do this side right here too. Basically do him and then cap him off again. Same idea, it's working out pretty good. And again, the screw up on this one, cutting it a little bit too big and then kind of having to revert back down a little bit. It's not a big deal because all what I have to do on the other side is not do that, you know? measure off my hole on that side and we'll be right as rain so that's basically all we're gonna do works out pretty good let me start working on the back i'm likely gonna have to take that fender back off a little bit of work here we go got this guy he's all flattened up now so basically she's flat from this profile only curved at the top but that curve will come out so what we got to do now put the fender back on figure out where our holes are gonna be here, drill those, and then we gotta do a lot of seam welding, find any little gaps, that kind of stuff. And there we go. So I just got a little gap there. 
Just got a little bit gap there, but that lets us bolt this flat fender onto flat panels. I don't know how people do it when they don't have a welder and they're playing with old stuff. Because again, it's not the way it's supposed to be done. I, I, I can attest to that, but it's pretty good. Not going to lie. This fender right here, if you're going to buy dually conversion fenders in Canada shipped, it's $2,500. Dually fenders used, they run about, you know, $250, $300 a piece. One, two, six hundred bucks, and you still got to do work to them. These little step side fenders, you can get them for about a hundred bucks for the two. If you can't weld, I don't know how you do it. You, it's, it's a lot of money. But either way, that works out. Yes, sir. I quite like that. So I just got to add a little square in there, a little square in there. Then we can blow this guy back off. Do the same on the other side. Here we go. Got this guy all seam welded in. That one. Got this guy all seam welded in. He's all set. So now we're going to lay the fender back on. I got a couple more spots I had to drill out. Not a big deal. And then should be able to bolt this guy to it so before i mount this fender i gotta make my side mounts right here we're electing to use two out of the three bolts because again we're going to be urethaning around this guy anyway but a running out of materials b don't want to buy any more so we're going to use what we got i have this left for angle give or take about nine inch that i need to cover that hole to that hole we might drill that one too add an extra mount then I have just enough to do a nine, 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 because that one's 28, that one's like 11, so I can cut them all down nines. We'll mount those guys to the fender, flush with this back piece, and then the idea is we'll put her on the truck, we can bolt that guy to that, reverse the entire order, bolt it on, it will make sense in a second. Let me cut these to nine inches, because I need four of them for that other fender as well, but we're doing good. All right, so, Got the two done for that side. We'll bolt those guys on loose. Then we'll do a mock bolt on that. I have to trace out a couple more bolt holes there. Then blow that guy off real quick. Yada, yada, yada. Then we can put these guys on, on that. Tighten it all down. See how everything looks. If we like it, then we take it all off and we grind. It's, it's a lot of back and forth on this fender. But... The good news is, once we get this one done and we really like it, the other side should go half as quick, or twice as quick. Yes. There we go. Got it all bolted on. So now, let's bolt it on to the bedside. Or, I should say, what's left of the bedside? <laughs> Big old hole in it. So there you go. We got it all mounted up. Got a little sliver I got to pull out, match up. But he's just kind of sitting here, kind of all lined up. He's bolted on the top. And then relatively flat there, we just gotta pull it in. I'm not overly concerned. I think we're doing pretty darn slick. So I just gotta mark my holes now along everything. Then I can drill them. And then this one's relatively done. Not too bad. So I gotta blow this guy back off, drill some holes, and we'll put him back on fully bolted up and I'll show you guys how we did. There we go. Got her all set up there. Not too shabby, not too shabby at all. So that's pretty much it. We got a little bit of fab work on the bottom and stuff, but. That gives us the general just. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bolt the fender on. We're gonna take that guy off when we start body work. We can finagle the last little bits and all that stuff, but that's simple, simple stuff. We're gonna bolt the fender on, see what it looks like. Final bit before body work, before adding the extra hole and all that stuff. And then we're gonna start working on the other side. I'll bring you guys back in a second. Well, there you go. Fender's all bolted on again, but this time it's actually bolted on. Now, bear in mind, this top bolt right here, I never put in. Same as on that one. They were bare to get to. So if I don't have to put them in right now, I'm not gonna. But when we put that bolt in, it's gonna close that gap right there. But if you look down, we got hardly a gap. Hardly, hardly. Maybe a sixteenth. Here it's about, a, I would say about an eighth inch. But when we pull that in, it's gonna be fine. Kind of come over here. Same idea. You got a sixteenth everywhere. That still needs to be pulled out there. Like, we've got a small little bit of body work that we got to do to her as we go through it. But the dually fender's now on. And it's a good proof, basically, that lets us copy it over on that side. But you're pretty darn slick, not going to lie. 
So unfortunately, in order to do that side, I gotta pull this fender back off. It's the way she goes. But once I pull that guy off, measure it there. We don't have to do too much welding. It's mostly just hole drilling and all that stuff. Then we can start on these tires. There we go. Got that guy all marked up. We're just gonna cut that guy out. We know what we need to cut on the other one and then we'll add our flat triangle in after we flatten that panel out. Same on that side. Either way, doing pretty good. There you go. We got that guy. He's all cut out. Just kind of chucked him in there for right now. Inside, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Time to start working on this fender. This fender is the roughest of the two. We'll fix that during body work, but we got to do the exact same thing. Cut off brackets, cut off stuff. Put my, wherever the angle went, there you go. Our new brackets on, that kind of stuff. Do a mock-up, do the drill, all that stuff. Let's get at it. There we go. So we got both brackets attached onto this fella. All set up now. So now we gotta start welding over on the bedside. And by weld, I mean the parts that make these guys flat. So let me go cut those out. We'll tack them up. All right, got the holes all drilled in. Let's mount up that fender again. This is pre-body work, pre-final alignment, all that stuff. We're just mounting the fenders on because really I want to put them tires on. Man, oh man, you wouldn't believe it. Come out here, all the tires are stolen off this cabin chassis. Who on earth I... would steal those tires for nefarious purposes? It's uh, the same guy who's uh, building his own mega cab, I'm pretty sure. So I stole my own tires. And we're gonna steal the rims off of these guys. These are Grampy's old rims. We're gonna steal the rims off of these tires that I mounted for the revival video. The best of the four, or the best of the six, four of them, yeah. They're gonna end up being the International's roller tires. Pretty good for 16 inch rims. But we need the rims off of this. So we're gonna dismount these tires again. And we're gonna mount those big old mud tires. I guess you guys never even seen them yet. Uh, you'll see them in a second anyway. So I gotta dismount all of these. Let's take all the air out of them. And then we'll go from there. We're gonna mount them and dismount them just right here. Real easy, in case you guys have never taken air out of tires. Take the valve cap off right here. Bingo bango. You're gonna need a tool like this. You can do it with needle nose. You can do it with a pick. Age is easier just to use one of these little valve extractor tools. Just go buy one. They're like two bucks. Put them in there. Turn it, it's gonna grab it, and we're gonna let it out. And there we go. So I'm gonna let the air out of this guy, and we're gonna do all six. DD Speed Shop, you gotta get off of that Coca Cola and get in some can of the dry, you're gonna like it. Got one of those fancy Corvettes there, the C8, kinda showed up. That's kinda neat. They're out of my price range for sure, but. I like anything that's black on black on black. That looks pretty darn slick. Well, either way, we're gonna get into tire dismounting. What you're gonna need, you're gonna need your high lift. You're gonna need something big and steel. I've always just used the Reese hitch on my truck or anything heavy, virtually. I'll show you guys how we're gonna do it on the first couple. And I'm gonna bang those ones out. We've already done this here before. Down just like so, kind of underneath the hitch. Now they make an actual adapter for this. We don't have that luxury. So we're gonna use the high lift natively. It's always worked out for me in the past. One of the most versatile tools you can get is one of these old farm jacks. Cause you can do just about anything with it. Just notice we were a little bit high in the last footage, but this is what I'm doing. I'm putting the foot of my high lift right here, right next to the rim. Cause we're gonna be pushing down on the rubber side only on the tire. It lifts the truck just a little bit, but the tires don't come off the ground or anything. If they do, you're doing it wrong. I can guarantee you on that. But we're basically just breaking the bead on this tire. These have already been off about two years now. They should come off fairly easy. Breaking the bead. There we go, going. There we go. Bead just broke. Now we can flip the tire around. Break this bead down. 
And there we go. That one's off the rim completely. All right, so now okay, it's got some soap inside of the old two liter. We're just gonna gently drizzle the soap around the seam. So I'm electing to use two tire spoons for this, but you don't have to. We used screwdrivers last time. Grab it and pull it over. Same thing. And work yourself around the tire. Until you pull off basically the entire thing. like so. What I like to do sometimes is flip the little fella over and then we chase the rim and we pull the rim out instead. Chase the rim. And there we go. I should pull out there now. Perfect. So now you might be wondering what tire we're going to end up using. And it's this fella right here. This is a Michelin X-Line tire. It basically measures out to be like 33 and a half, roughly, for a 16-inch rim. But this is the main reason why I bought these ones. Widest point, 8 and a half inches. So that means we can run duels on this. No issues whatsoever. And it gives us a pretty aggressive tread pattern. These are actually military takeoff tires, so they're a little bit of a harder compound, but they're summer and snow rated, so can't really go wrong. Let's mount this guy onto that rim. And after all that, there we go. We got one, he's aired up to 40. I'm gonna let him sit for a little bit, because he was an awful struggle to put on. I wanna make sure that there's nothing, you know, to screw around with him. So I'm gonna let him sit, then we're gonna measure out and see just if we're losing any air or anything. We got another five to go. If they're all going to be a struggle like that, that is not going to be a fun job. But someone has to do it. <laughs> that was a miserable time taking those off. For some reason, it's almost like the grease that I used to put these fellas on back when we did the old revival on Grampy's truck turned into glue. Those tires were some hard to take off. Now I get to struggle putting these ones on. I'll bring you guys in for the last one. Well, I told you guys I would bring you back, but I didn't. This was a job I've never actually struggled that hard with six tires before. I've done thousands of tires, quite literally thousands, not even a joke. Exactly like this. These sidewalls on these tires, for some reason, were the stiffest sidewalls I've ever done. They were definitely a struggle to put on, but we got them all done. So this hang out here. Till we finish the dually stuff. We can bolt those suckers on. Pretty slick. All right, so that's what it looks like before. I guess I never even showed you the spacers yet. Jeez, can I even put a hat on? I guess not. Let's go check them out. So these are the spacers that we went with. They're two inch spacers. They come with a uh, red Loctite. You want a red Loctite these fellas in. But we're not gonna do that because these are gonna come off again when we do the body work and all this. This is just to see what the final form of the truck is gonna look like. So. Let's put these guys on, and let's put these guys on. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. You got to remember, she's about one inch shorter than a factory dually ten and a quarter, but we're doing pretty good. That ain't half bad at all. Still up in the air. and got to squat it down. Let me do the other side real quick. Then we can drop it down. We'll have a better idea of what's going on. All right, so what we're going to do now, we're going to take the rubber off these fellas, these good tires, because what we can do in this predicament because we have the single wheel rims we can put those guys those rubbers on those rims then we can basically have the matching rubber set just not the matching wheel set down the road we'll fix that problem with a different way 
But this way we can still get along, we can still drive it, we can still have all the good times with it. Just we won't have the same rim as the back, so hopefully we don't run into any issues. Most likely we will, you know how she goes. So I gotta basically take two tires off, take two, basically I gotta take four tires off and put two on. So let me do that, I'll bring you guys back. Right, so that's kind of how she sits. Rough, you know, idea of the body. Let's get it outside. I want to see this thing out in the light. Well, you know, we got to see how it cold starts. It's been sitting for just a little bit. Let's key on. Turn that guy off. Turn that guy off. Oh, where's my switch? I mean my switch. Wait for the glow plugs to cycle out. It's about a negative one outside right now. Supposed to get 10 centimeters of snow tomorrow. Fire it up. Good old faithful. Can't go wrong with that. Can't go wrong with an old IDI. No, sir. That's the uh, the basic body lines and style of the old F-350. <laughs> awesome. No, she's a big, mean fighting machine. That's for sure. Can't even see the hips from straight on. You kind of have to lean out just a little bit. Well, that's pretty darn slick. I quite like that. Yeah, that looks pretty darn mean, not gonna lie. That's awesome. Really turned out quite nice. And again, that's the general gist of it. We're gonna put accessories and move things around and all over the place, but that's the general height that we're going fit. That's the general length that we're going with. That's the general width that we're going with. We'll put a D60 up front, the actual right spacers to run those big old deep dish rims. And we'll do the actual back end that should be on this truck. Again, we're about an inch too narrow than what stock would be, but that's an easy fix. But yeah, that's uh, that's the old Mega Cab in her rough form, without accessories, without anything. But that's pretty darn slick. Now we still have small things that we have to do. Basically, those two doors they still need to be aligned. We still got to put a couple pieces in the bed, and where those fenders are, and where those fenders are, we still have to add two little tiny pieces on both corners, kind of bring it all in but we'll cover that in the body work episode but yeah that's the rough dually conversion and i mean rough dually conversion but it suits the truck quite well i hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the mega cab we'll see you guys soon likely in the body work because we're starting to run out of temperature for paint to stick so that's likely the next on the list i'll catch you guys really really soon hey see ya